hoping y'all can hear me. I'm always thinking I'm gonna have my act together better the next time, and I never ever do. So I am here this morning um, coming to you live from my studio in, or from my shop and studio in Afton, Minnesota, Liza Jane Designs. I'm in far Eastern Minnesota on the Wisconsin border, kind of in the Twin Cities area. So if you're in this neck of the woods uh, because you live here or because you're visiting, I hope you can come see us in Afton. It's a beautiful little town right on the St. Croix River. Um, if you are not in this area and you're interested in sourcing Iron Orchid Designs products, you can find a retailer, a stockist near you by going to the Iron Orchid Designs website and click on the link for stockists, put in your zip code or town and you'll come up with a list of stockists in your area. Many of us ship too, so if you, if you don't have anyone super close, find someone kind of close and see if you can establish a relationship with somebody. This is what we're gonna be working on today. It's a mixed media project using, um, sorry about that, using the IOD products that I'm gonna show you right now. Um, today, we are gonna do a wood blank panel. This is 12 by 16. Um, I prepared our sample, this guy, on a piece of, mixed media paper, so that's another option, and I'll show you that as well. If you do it on paper, then you have the follow-on step, right, of finding a nice frame that you like and putting that on. If you do it on the Iron Orchid wood panel, it's ready to hang right away, no, no fussing with the frame. But we're going to be using This, what is it called? It's called Le Courier Stamp. The typesetting looks like newspaper print for our background. We're gonna be using a stencil that I cut myself of a typewriter. Um, you can find images of typewriters online, maybe find a commercial stencil. There's a lot of ways to get those images for your use. Um, I used my silhouette machine to cut this. I haven't even put the transfer tape on it yet. So I'm going to set that aside for a few minutes while we start with a little bit of stamping. I'm gonna bring on the close-up camera. If my <laughs> iPhone will recognize my face. There it is. Let's bring the second camera so we can see close up the gallery board that I've already painted with an off-white. Somehow it's gotten some little bit of black. I'm going to cover that over. We know this chalk style paint dries really quickly. So before I even adjust the cameras, I'm going to cover those up a little bit. Because we're putting the type stamp on, it probably won't be so bad. Um, let me turn off this banner that's going across the screen. And I'm gonna turn me and my face away. There we go. This is what we want to see, right? I want to unmute. <laughs> I'm trying to unmute myself here. Maybe I can't.
There. 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 Can you hear me, guys? Can I get a thumbs up if you can hear me? Any kind of a sign that you can hear me? <laughs> I should be, there should be sound with this down facing camera. I got two thumbs up, so yes, you can hear me. I think that means that. Thank you for that. So here's our mixed media board. Here is, can never also figure out which way to move the camera. I, I'm going to be using the IOD ink in black, and I'm just gonna use it today with a brayer. I'm going to move this up out of the way so I don't accidentally get paint on it while we're inking up the stamp. So squeezing out some ink on just this piece of backing paper that's got a coating on it. And I'm going to use the brayer, a nice even coat on the brayer, not goopy. and ink up this Le Courier stamp. A little more ink on there. And we'll bring that board back down into the camera view and I'm going to go right up to the top and stamp like so. So I'm holding on with one hand and moving with the other. The Le Courier, getting that nice newspaper type print. And I love these marks. There we go. I love this stamp. So we have that and we have this whole area down here that I also want to continue, but I don't want the headline again. I don't want to have this part in, so I'm going to just re-ink the stamp in the lower part. And kind of hold the top away as I work this and line up some of the line here and press. I like that. It's that there's some overprinting a little bit, but that doesn't bother me. And there's that. So I'm happy with that print on this gallery blank. I'm going to set that aside and just show you two. If you wanted to do a framed version, what I've done is already put some paint on a, a piece of paper out of a pad that I have of mixed media paper. So it's similar to watercolor paper, but it's smooth and it's of a weight and substance. So it stands up to this kind of wet media and all the things we like to do to our substrates, putting water and ink and paints on them. So it, it holds up nicely to all sorts of mixed media. I'm going to re-ink re the stamp. So we're going to kind of be working on two for one here today, at least for part of it. While the board dries, I am just stamping the mixed media paper. Now this particular stamp, I think, would just make beautiful, beautiful backgrounds for lots of um, collage work or 
you know, other mixed media projects. Oh, look, the stamping press made a little mess on there. That happens, you know. I'm going to just do this right here because some of this is going to be underneath a table, a table in air quotes, that um, will that our typewriter is going to sit on later. So we've got that guy all stamped up. Let me try to show you the weight of this paper. It's it's a little bit thicker than cardstock. I'll kind of pull that away. And I measured off a 12 by 16. I think it's important when you cut paper out of a, a pad like that, if you're going to frame, you want to cut it to a size that you're going to easily be able to find a standard frame. Because if you've ever tried to, you know, have things custom framed, it can run into a lot, a lot of money. So this is a, a nice way, either working with the gallery board or working with a standard size, size piece of paper, you can um, cut down your your costs that way. So I showed you that I have cut a stencil for us to use today. Here it is. I have not even put the transfer tape on it yet, so that'll be another quick little demo. Something I like to do with transfer tape, you'll see it here. I don't like it when it's fully sticky. So I like to put it on a surface like this vinyl table cover a couple of times and rip it up and put it down and rip it up so it's not quite as sticky when I put my stencil onto it. If you're used to these kinds of stencils, you'll understand what I'm doing. And if you're not, just hang tight and I will explain it to you. These are single use stencils. I cut this one myself using my silhouette machine. Um, they, they can be done with like a Cricut or any kind of machine like that. And basically the blue part is the stencil and some of it is a mask to mask off areas that we want to remain the background color. There's a backing sheet like we have with transfers and that's going to be now the first thing that I remove is the backing sheet. Before I do that, I'm going to press the back to try to get all the little blue pieces to move to my transfer tape. All right, so now I will lift off this backing paper, which is what I used before to put ink on. I save all my things and I use them for other purposes. My little tagline here is create restore, renew. So I'm all about reusing things. We want all the little blue parts. I think I need a hard surface. I'm going to bring up this other gallery blank and just sort of scrape that on so that the blue comes off this paper and moves to the transfer tape. It's not wanting to do it today. Maybe I made it too unsticky. So I'm going to poke it away with my little pokey stick here and keep those blue pieces on the sticky transfer tape transfer paper. I hope you can see this. I'm just using a little pokey stick. It's very sharp 
and just using it to pick at the pieces of blue stencil material to take it off the backing sheet and move it on to our carrier transfer tape. There's a lot of little parts on this one. We'll be able to rearrange them if somehow they go in the wrong spot for a second. There's a sweet spot, I guess, of stickiness that I might have taken away a little too much of the sticky on that transfer tape. But there's always a workaround. That's one of the gifts that I've found in creating art pieces or just creating in general is I learn that if the first attempt doesn't cut it, there's generally another way. And sometimes the other way gives me a better result than I would have gotten in the first place. So carries over to life too. I, I don't sweat the small stuff like I once did, I guess. So we're almost done here. When this paper comes off, it should be completely white. Whoops, some of these I didn't weed out earlier. They should come out. This piece doesn't belong. These are supposed to come out, so I'm going to take them out right now. Generally, if you buy a stamp like this from someone who's cut it, they will have done the weeding for you, and you'll be at this step of these areas. Now, it's clear. Here's our typewriter. See where it is here. So, so now we have the stencil and the little masks for the keys that are there. I'm going to bring this mixed media board back and just, it's a little bit uh, wet in a couple of spots. So let me hit it with my heat gun. I'm really happy that you all are joining me today. Thank you for that. I'm always cramming more into a day than the human should probably attempt, but I think that's pretty common. I have my four-year-old grandson staying with us right now, and poor little dude had um, an upset tummy yesterday. I didn't <laughs> tending to him and making sure he felt uh, cared for seemed like the most important thing yesterday. So I got a little behind on some of my other tasks. So I think that's good. I am going to now place the stencil about a uh, so it's like a third of the way up and I, I I have learned in creating mixed media pieces you know to kind of divide something into six with my eye and and try to cover the lower or the upper to, to not deal in halves things that are directly in the middle of a piece for whatever reason, are not as interesting as when you break it up in other ways. So I am placing it here because later we're going to add this table using a little bit of glaze and some painter's tape, and then we'll start putting our transfer bits all around. So for now, I'm placing that typewriter to leave enough room for a subsequent table. And then we'll start decorating it up. So this is where removing the stick from my transfer tape is a little bit helpful. It makes it easier now to lift where these stayed in place. I may have to, again, 
knock these guys down to encourage them to stick to the board but they're going to stick in place like we apply regular transfers let me see if i can get that to come off the sheet and onto the board by burnishing it yeah that helped a lot this guy is still it's very much like applying a transfer right sometimes it comes right off and sometimes you have to give a little more elbow grease so i'm just peeling that back this guy flipped over there he is this guy looks like a cheerio and he wants to come up too but we're gonna encourage him to stay there we go there we go and it's on i'll put my cheerio back in place and there can you see that i think you can see that pretty well so that is in place it's kind of a wax on wax off sort of process right you cut it you weed it you put on the transfer tape you peel off the backing you apply it and then you pull off and then you're you're left with your stencil that is sticking right onto the surface because i was frugal with my stencil material i don't have a lot of wiggle room here and i'm going to put some painters tape at the top and at the bottom so i don't accidentally smear black paint where i don't want it and for this job i am using paint and not ink so i'm just reaching over to grab this is a chalk style paint i'm going to shake it up i keep them in these condiment bottles and we'll just spritz some of that out onto the non-stick paper again i'm going to put a glove on which i should do way more often than i do do and if my grandsons were watching they would say oh she said do do i did say do do okay so i've got the glove on i have one of these makeup sponges what i like to do here is put some on and then bounce it off onto the stencil itself before i go into the open area if you have stencils before and i think you know most of us have done some you know that you don't want a lot of paint or ink a little bit thicker of a paint works better than runny like ink is not the great the greatest medium to use for stenciling because it's so thin and and runny so a little bit thicker is better and a thin coat of it is good to start so i am just up and down pouncing through the open areas this black paint over the typewriter stencil I'm not seeing comments, and that could be because when I use StreamYard, like I am today, I'm still not advanced enough with StreamYard to be able to see comments when I'm doing the video. But when I don't have an assistant with me, it's a little bit tricky for me to do that. So let me just tell you, I'll come back later. If you have any questions or comments, I'll take a look at them and answer any that you have. I totally want this to be a clear process and to help you understand different ways too if you if you want to adapt this for for your own use in a different way so that is on I'm gonna let it set up a little bit I'm gonna maybe hit it let's hit it with the air dryer
I love that with these chalky paints, you can really see it go to match when it dries. So there's there's not too much question about it being dry. I'm seeing white show through where I rather it not. So I'm going to come back in and just apply another very thin light coat of black paint. I've got a thing for old fashioned typewriters. Uh, my sisters, my sisters are quite a bit older than I am. And when they were in high school, that was still like a thing that was taught in high school. You, you took typing. It wasn't even an option, I don't think. If you were a woman, if you were a girl student, you had to take typing. By the time I got to school, that was no longer the case. But when I was a little kid, I used to like to get into their typing books and their typing stuff. And I, I taught myself how to type when I was about five. So maybe that's why I have this thing for old typewriters. I don't know. I just think they're romantic as well. I just picture a novelist sitting at a desk with an ocean breeze pecking out the keys and writing the great American novel. I have a very active imagination. So I'm just drawing this guy. This is our typewriter layer that's painted. happy I used the glove because that paint is not on my fingers. So we're going to turn that away. And the paint should be dry enough right now. Let's do the big reveal of the typewriter. Oh, there it is. So you can see the top already. I'm going to need to get my pink pokey stick back again. And remove some of these smaller areas with the pokey stick. I call it a pokey stick. I'm sure it has some other name. Anybody know what the real name is? Something that's not a stylus. An awl? I think it's too fine to be an awl, but maybe. But pokey stick is a decent enough description and it works for me. So I'm just coming in and lifting these masks. The mask part of the stencil is what is forming the keys for us on the typewriter. And this may look tedious, but I have to tell you that I am the kind of person that finds this very satisfying. I love to peel that and see what's underneath it. I, I don't find it boring or tedious. I think it's meditative and relaxing. So I enjoy this kind of repetitive task. If you do too, then these are probably the right kind of stencils for you to use. And if it drives you nuts to do this, Maybe you'd want to find a different approach. The good news is there's always a way to suit your style of creating. And we all do things a little bit differently, which makes it a more interesting world. So I'm going to just continue to poke away at these donut and key shapes until our typewriter is fully revealed. It's pretty easy to see them here. So poking with this tool, and this is something I just picked up in the craft section at the Dollar Tree. Um, there were two in a pack for, for a dollar. I think now they're a dollar 25 because everything's gone up that way. 
they're not super substantial. If you dig it too much, this pokey part will come out. But for a 50 cent tool, it's very versatile and useful. The, the back end works for burnishing things. And this sharp end just makes a great a great tool for removing masks and etching into things if you want to. Oops, a little too much paint there, maybe. Got some more typewriter keys here to lift. Now, I like this type of stencil. Even though it's single use, because it's self-adhesive, -adhe it tends to not bleed. And also, my mind doesn't work real well to cut a stencil where you have to leave the connections. So if you did this on a, a more traditional mylar type stencil, you'd have to connect all of those or it would all lift up and you would have a, a big hole. That was my experience when I tried Mylar stencils. So this works well for me. And I'm going to put a layer of sealer on this. Let me just run this one more time, make sure it's dry. Before we do the sealer, we'll make a table. This will be the quickest table you've ever seen built in an online video, I'm pretty sure. So, you know, you can decide. Do you want the table? Where do you want it? And I'm going to put it somewhere right around here. So I'm going to bring this piece of painter's tape at an angle to suggest that table edge. And then the next one, I'm going to see where that hits, because that's the back edge of the table, and put that over here. So there's my table with the typewriter sitting on top. For this job, I'm using a glaze. Um, this is a it's called black walnut, so it's kind of a cross between a gray and a brown. You could use a watered-down paint to get the same kind of effect. You could use a, any kind of a liquid patina or medium like that with a tiny bit of a paint color in it, and you would get this transparent glaze effect. So I'm just applying it. I'm going up to the edge of the typewriter. If it gets on the typewriter, I'm not worried about it because the typewriter is black and it's not really going to show up, but I'm trying to just come up to the edge. And then the painter's tape is a protection for the back of the table. So coming around there and putting that on. I like to do my edges at the same time I'm working on this. So I'm going to do the edge of this piece with the glaze where the table is. And later I'll decide if I want the other edges to, to remain the off-white color or if I want to paint them black. But, but I want this base to be the color of the table. So I'm just putting that on the edges. Now, because it's a glaze, I'm going to wipe it back a bit, get up to that typewriter edge. I have a soft old dish cloth here, and I'm going to wipe some of that back. I personally very much like the look where 
it's sort of rough. It takes more in some areas than others. If it takes too much off, I'll just put a little more on and just rub it back until I like it. So I like it. I'm going to take off my tape. And now we have a table that our very cute old fashioned typewriter is sitting on. I like how these little dots, these little postmarks or whatever they represent are sitting right at, on top of the table. We're going to give this a quick dry. Because I, you guys who um, have prior experience using transfers, IOD transfers, you understand that they especially like sticking to things that are slick, non-porous, and dry. I want to make sure my background here is dry. And I'm going to put a quick coat of sealer over all of it. This is one that will dry quickly. So I'm just coming across the top. I'm laying a bead line of sealer right there. And I'm going to take, make sure this is a clean brush. It is. And just bring that down and seal this piece very quickly so we can start applying transfers before the end of our video here. So I've also learned about sealers that it's best to not overwork and just kind of go in one direction or another, not back and forth. So I want to get an even coat, kind of angle it up so I can see where it's glossy and I've applied the sealer. If I miss any areas, I can spot it that way. And I do believe it's covered. So I'm going to hit it with the dryer again, you guys. I hope that's not too noisy, but it'll help us be able to move on. Um, I can't tell who's watching, but I'm grateful that you are. Thank you so much for tuning in. I see that there are some people watching, so that's awesome. And because I'm seeing some thumbs up and some even a few hearts I'm, I'm assuming you can hear me and see this project coming together so i'm working on a 12 by 16 inch gallery wood gallery blank and iod blank this is the largest size that we that we carry and i'm just trying not to stay in one place too much as we dry this Top coat. When you're doing this in the comfort of your own home and studio and workspace, you know, a best practice is really to let the paint dry very well before you I put, put a sealer on it, let the sealer dry. And using heat tools is, is good in a pinch, but you, you definitely want to make sure your surfaces are very dry before you start trying to apply a transfer over the wood or paper or whatever you're going to apply it to. So we're getting there on this. Something I love about this type of project as well is that you get to use those little bits of transfer that are left over from large projects that you've done. I keep the tiniest pieces because sometimes it's just a, a pinhead amount of a color added to the top of a board that just brings it to life somehow. So find a method for storing your transfer bits 
and you'll be able to put them to good use on future projects. So this is feeling pretty good. While I let it cool down and finish drying, I want to show you a way that I've found. So when I, now that we have transfers in pad format, a lot of times I just slide the leftover pieces back into the pad, right? So that works. That's a nice way. Sometimes ones that don't belong to that set get mixed in there. I'm going to start picking out pieces that I think will work on my typewriter piece. I've got scissors here somewhere. Here's the scissors. Just kind of, I always pick out more than I think I'm going to want because I can play around and eliminate. I like these pieces that come up and go back down again for this purpose. Like they can be coming out of the top of the typewriter and swinging back around. Uh, so for that reason too, I like this, this pink with the greenery here. I'm going to cut that guy out. I like the way the blues come up and then come back down. And this guy, for the same reasons, I'm kind of fond of that guy, too. So I'm going to do that and that. I'm going to leave this one for something else and put that over there. So this is my process for deciding, or step one, right? It's just auditioning a lot of little pieces that I think might work. I like these little blue standalone. They're like, I don't know what they're like. They're like little daisies, but they're blue. I'm going to set those over there. So I have stacks of transfer pads that I have used on other projects. We can mix and match. Uh, I think I have entomology in here somewhere. Uh, I did a little workshop doing this typewriter image here locally the other night. and. Some of the ladies included wine glasses next to their typewriters, which I thought was brilliant. So that was a fun thing. They um, used the wine glass on the tabletop, and some of the splatters of the, the wine droppings and made a super fun um, motif that way. These are ladies who were in a wine club, so it was very suiting, suited to their their personalities and interests. Um, I'm looking for something that's going to have a bug or a butterfly. Here we go. Entomology. Um, I, think, I think I want to add quite a bit of color. So maybe one of these guys, either this green one or the blue just for a pop of color on. I think we've got enough to start playing with. But the last thing I would like to show you in this regard is this guy. It is just an office file box. It opens like this. And the smaller pieces that would tend to get lost, I'm afraid, in the pads, I, I throw them in a box like this. Look, we have a bluebird left from Christmas a, a while back and lots of little buds and such. So this is a handy way that I've found for me to keep track of my storage bits. And as I get more and more, I'll probably end up with a box for flowers and another box for leaves and another box for butterflies because having more always seems like a good idea. Looking for a transfer rubby stick. We have pokey sticks and transfer rubby sticks. I've been taking my show on the road, so I've lost track of some things. Let me see if they're in my, here we go, in the tote. 
So now let's play around with these sample bits. I'm going to check the time. Yeah, we're going to be wanting to sign off here pretty soon. But the next step is pretty obvious if you've worked with IOD transfers before. Um, we know not to touch the back. I'm going to kind of float this above. And honestly, I just like that one right there. It looks like it's coming out of the, the place where the paper would roll around in there. And I'm just going to rub that transfer on like so. Um, You probably do not need to watch me do all of this on camera, so I'll just we'll do a little bit. Apply the butterfly, maybe, for good measure. I definitely want this piece to be coming out of the typewriter and down off the edge. Yeah, I like that. So I'm going to put that guy here. You'll notice, uh, I mean, some of it is because I'm doing a live video, but I try always to not overthink the placement of things. I could drive myself crazy trying to find a perfect placement where there really is no such thing. Um, go with what you like and what you think looks balanced and good to your eye. And you're going to be happy with your final result. There isn't perfect. There's rules of thumb, right, about spreading things out and repeating colors and that kind of thing. So you can learn about the rules, but learn about them so you can break them effectively. So I'm going to put this guy up here because I don't want to hide I think of this as an important part of, you know, knowing this is a typewriter. So I broke that branch and I'm going to reapply it up here like it's coming there. And that is that. So let's do a little rehash, I guess. We started with a 12 by 16 inch gallery board. I painted it with an off-white chalk style paint. I used the IOD ink, the decor ink in black with a brayer. I applied the ink to the Le Courier stamp, which produced this nice type, typed newspaper column, kind of a background for this. We used a single use stencil to produce this typewriter image. You can search the internet for typewriter stencils you could use. Uh, you could cut your own if you have a silhouette or a Cricut machine. There's lots of ways to get that guy. Um, some painter's tape and glaze to mark off the table. Sealed it up and then transfers of your choosing. So whatever transfers you like best, can find a place in this beautiful project. So I'm going to play around with placement some more and not rush it. Um, our time together is about up. Let me see if I can, I think I'll just turn this up so you can see I'm still here. Yes, I'm still here. Um, so I'm going to sign off. Here's our project. Here's the one I did earlier that is in a frame. So if you choose to do it on a mixed media paper, you just cut it uh, to size. I encourage standard sizes so you can find frames that fit without having to sell any of your children um, or the farm. You don't want to sell the farm to create art. So just have some fun with it. Whatever images that you choose, um, building up in layers makes for a fun and interesting project. So I'm going to go back and see if I can find any comments from people.
I thank you so much for joining me again. I am Liz from Liza Jane Designs in Afton, Minnesota. If I happen to be your local stockist, give me a call or drop by and see me. If I'm not and you're looking for a local stockist, uh, the IOD webpage and the stockist locator uh, can tell you who in your area whether you're in the USA or elsewhere, you can find a stock as many places all over the world. And we love to help our customers make beautiful things because you were created to create. It's a true story. And I can't wait to see you again in a couple of weeks. So bye for now. Love you guys. Thanks a bunch.